many of us on this morning, we are honest with ourselves. And if we admit that we have areas in our lives uh, where we are dissatisfied or where we have lost some type of joy. We all have made promises that we have not been able to keep. We all have experienced some failures and some setbacks. And even for some of us, we're trying to figure out how we're going to pay the next bill, yet alone, how can we contribute more to the church? But no matter what you may be going through on this morning, if you don't remember anything else on this morning, I want you to remember that God says it's not over until he says it's over. Right. See, what you have to understand is that God, he's not interested in your past, but he's more interested in your future. In this 43rd chapter of Isaiah, we see that the prophet is doing what he does best, and that is being a mouthpiece for the Lord during one of the most trying times in the history of the Israelites. It is at this particular time the Israelites are being held captive in Babylon, and they are at the lowest point. Not only are the Israelites discouraged, but they are defeated, deflated, and they are depressed. And so what God does is that he sends a word through the prophet Isaiah so that he can send a message to his people. And at this particular time, God realized and recognized that his people needed some reassurance at this time. And what he did is he went about reassuring them that in his 43rd chapter by first telling them who he is. In verse 1, he tells them that he is the creator, that he is the one that made them out of nothing. And if nobody else knows you, God knows you. He sees all. He knows all. Amen. He is the only one who knows the plan of your life. He knew what you were going to be going through before you even know anything about it. It's called a test. In verse number 3, he says that he is their Lord and that he is the one that loves them and that they are precious in his sight. See, unlike men, uh, we, we always see the worst in people. You know, when you get ready to, to do something good in your life, you know, establish a new business, you know, went to a new level in your life, people seem not to want to congratulate you on what you just done. Well, well. But what they rather want to do is bring up on how you used to be. Well, well you know, I, I see you got this new business going, but you remember back in the day how you used to be? Um, I see you know, gradu uh, uh, graduated and received a new d degree, but you see how you used to be? And so what the Lord is doing, he's having to remind them that he is precious in their sight, in his sight. Amen. See, the Lord understood what we have been through. He knows the wrong that we have done. But despite of what we've been through, despite of our imperfection, God, he's still been perfect with his grace and his mercy. Yes, sir. And so what God is trying to tell someone this morning is that whatever you may be facing, whatever challenge you may have, in your life, whatever hills you may have to climb, whatever giants you have to deal with, whatever raging rivers you have to cross, these things he wants you to remember so that you would be reassured. Yeah. So if that was not good enough for you, let's go to our verses. Verses 16 and verses 17. All right. What he does is that he's reminding them of the great things that he had done for their forefathers. Yeah. How he brought them out of bondage into Egypt. And then in the middle of the Red Sea, he made a highway for his people and a graveyard for their enemies. Yeah. See, that problem that you might be dealing with, understand it's not too big for God. Those people that you might be dealing with, understand that, that, that may not be, too, that's not too big for God. And see, when you think about what the Lord has done for you, and when you think about the changes that he's made and, and how he brought you from nothing to something, that should be a good enough reason to help you to just push forward. In verse 18, he says, forget about your past. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what you've been through. Don't worry about what you've done. It, it, it's in the past. It's, yeah. it's, it's back there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Forget about the former things. Don't even think about it. Yeah. In other words, what he is saying in verse number 18 is that <laughs> you thought I had a good thing for you going then, mm -hmm. uh, but wait till you're about to see what I'm about to do. Yeah. He said, I'm about to do a brand new thing. Uh -huh. brand new thing. That right there should excite you if you just yeah. think about, okay, yes, Lord, what you done did for me was good. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. I'm thankful for what you've done. But you mean on. to tell me that you have something better else for me ahead? Let's continue to see what he says in this word. He says that you must truly believe that he's going to see you through. Amen. Sometimes we get so caught up in being in a situation and we not knowing how we're going to get out of this situation. Sometimes we, we, we give up doing the test, not knowing that there's a testimony on the other end. And so what God is trying to tell us is that uh, we have to be able to have trust that he's going to see us through. 
We can't have that I hope so kind of faith. Come on. I hope this is going to happen. Well, we can't have that I think so kind of faith. Uh -huh. we, we can't have that I wish so kind of faith. You have to have that I know so kind of faith. Right. I know I'm going to prosper. I know yeah. I'm going to get that job. I know I got a blessing on the other end. Yeah. We have to have that type of faith. You have to have that type of faith that's going to allow you to use your failures and your setbacks as a stepping stone. Yeah. Yes, sir. You got to have that kind of faith that's going to tell you in your darkest hour that God is bigger than, more, than your most powerful enemy. Uh -huh. You got to have that type of faith that's going to tell you that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. Mm -hmm. So in order to experience this new and amazing thing that God has prepared for you, mm -hmm. you must act on your faith. Mm. All right. And to act on your faith, it requires us to, that we must have to first change our thinking. Mm -hmm. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. What that means is that you will be able to test and improve what God will is. Mm -hmm. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Some of our thought patterns, some of our thinking patterns, it only causes us troubles at times because we get so caught up in focusing on our failures. We get so caught up on thinking on what we can't do. We get, we get so caught up on thinking that we've tried to do this before, but it didn't work. We keep thinking that, well, nobody has ever done it, so that probably means that I can't do it. And we always have this mindset that nothing new is going to happen in our lives. Yeah. But if you focus on your past success, if you focus on, on what you used to do, if you focus on how good you used to be or how good you used to look, then nothing new is going to happen mm -hmm. in your life. Yeah. Too often times, mm -hmm. we fail because we depend on what we understand, yeah. what we can do. We don't want to get out of our comfort zone. We, we sometimes, you know, it's not even other people who limit us. We limit ourselves. Yes, yes. And it could come from, from other people because we allow certain people to tell us that it would never work. We allow other people to, to tell us that, I don't know if you can do that or not. It's been tried before, but, but no one's been successful, so I don't know if, if you can be able to do it. But if you go to the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, and verse 6, it's, it reminds us that we will succeed not by our own strength, but on the power of of God. Praise yeah. mom. Donovan McClurkin, he has some powerful words. I was actually listening to this, and I, I didn't add this until just now, but I, I was listening to Pandora, and Donovan McClurkin uh, have this song, and, and when I really thought about the words of this song, Donovan McClurkin asked a question. He says, what do you do when you've done all you can? That's right, that's right. And it seems like it's never enough and what do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone? Yeah. What do you give when you're given your all? And it seems like you can't make it through. When there's nothing left to do, you just stand and watch the Lord see you through. As I get ready to close, I just want to leave you with this message. When you are challenged in your life and you're not sure what commitment you should make, just remember the same power that got the children of Israel through the Red Sea is the same power that got us through phase one, and it's going to be the same power that will make a way through phase two. On, it is at this time that we need everybody at Northbound to just stand. Amen. We made a commitment that we're going to walk on this journey. Last week I talked about Northbound. Are you ready to take off? We in the air, y'all. All right. We can't turn around and make no emergency landing. Because see what God took us through phase one is just a, a testimony of what he's getting ready to prepare us for phase two. All right. See, if, if it's nothing else you have learned about this northbound journey, you have to understand that God is definitely in the blessing business. Yes, we started off at FSCJ. Come on. And we met and we met. We're trying to find a building. We're trying to find a place. And we had pretty much two months to get out that building. Come on. And then God brought us here. He didn't bring us here to just sit here and be here for northbound. And then when we get a little struggle, we get something going on, we just sit still and not want to move on. We got to keep pressing forward. All right. But all that we're going to keep pressing forward is that we need everybody 
on board. Yeah. I don't care what your situation may be. I don't care what issues you have. Let's talk about it. Let's resolve it and let's move on because there's souls out there that needs to be saved because this work that we are doing for Northbound is not about us. It's all about going out here, taking over the city of Jacksonville and saving some souls. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So whatever it is you may be going through, it's not big enough that God cannot handle. Yeah. Don't worry about what those people are saying about you. Yeah. Because see, the devil wouldn't be working this hard enough now if we weren't doing the good work. Yeah. The devil wouldn't be working this hard if we weren't doing something good. Yeah. So every good thing that we do, there's gonna be 10 devils that's gonna be coming at us and that's gonna be trying to fight us. But what you gotta have that mindset is that, you know what, we gonna stand. Yeah. We gonna stand. God done bless us to get to this place Amen. and he's gonna bless us to get us through phase two.